Hey, Machinery Pete here, folks. I'm close to home again. I'm up in Zambroda, Minnesota. And now I hope you enjoyed the video from last week. Uh, Denny Hink out of Red Wing, Minnesota. His amazing collection of garden tractors. And I tell you what, on the drive up to Red Wing to visit Denny, drove past my friend Todd Houghton, Houghton Auction Service here in Zambroda. And I noticed these garden tractors sitting out. And these are on a sale Monday, an online auction, for a gentleman we're going to visit with right now, Dave Hallstrom. Uh, from Red Wing, Minnesota. And Dave, thanks for meeting me out here today to tell well, us about you. your tractors. Well, and thank you, Greg. I appreciate the opportunity to share these. Well, it's quite a collection, Dave. Uh, and again, folks, these are selling Monday, September 23rd, online auction, Houghton's Auction Service. Now, Dave, I had heard that uh, when I was up uh, videoing with Denny that you guys were connected. You've been buddies for a long time. Yeah, as long as I can remember, uh, <clears throat> Dennis and his brother Dave. Dave is my next door neighbor, oh. and uh, Dennis uh, just lives a few blocks uh, from us. And uh, we meet for coffee just about every day and nice. solve world problems and <laughs> talk tractors. <laughs> <laughs> now, what, I haven't talked to Denny in the in the ten days or so since the video went online. Has uh, has he been getting some feedback? And uh... an awful lot of feedback. Yeah. I, uh, Kind of jokes with us he says i got to talk to him by appointment now and, <laughs> and if he wants awesome. an autograph you know they got to got to wait your turn so, that's so he's got a lot of hits on it it's yeah he's had a lot of fun with it and right that so well uh, todd houghton saw the video and called me up uh and said pete we got to complete the story here and tell us tell uh, uh folks about our friend dave here with with the auction in your collection and dave let's just do a little walk around here we have uh, how many total garden tractors here uh, there's a total of 30. okay uh, I think 14 of them um, I've restored. Um, the rest of them are kind of as is, um, as I've found them. Sure. And it's a, it's a mixture of a lot of different brands. Um, Case, uh, Wheel Horse, Speed X, Cub Cadet, Jacobson. And you've been uh, collecting, is it roughly 15 years or so, about the same yeah, time as Denny? about the same time as Denny, yeah. Okay. About a little over 15 years. And what was it that got you guys into collecting these things, Dave? Uh, that's a real good question. You know, I I personally have always been a collector of something. Okay. You know, ever since I uh, first got married, and uh, uh, tractors was just the latest uh, garden tractors was just the latest kind of bug sure. bit, and uh, I've had an awful lot of fun doing it. And I've met people throughout the nation, and uh, I bet. Uh, created a lot of friends and. You know, there's a lot of knowledge out there of uh, yeah, I've people been that specialize in certain brands of garden tractors. I've been amazed at the comments on the video we posted last week. Yeah, you're right. There's so much knowledge on certain yeah. brands and models. And, yep. And uh, well, let's have some fun here, Dave. You, we'll, okay. we'll walk through and tell the history. Now, I notice you've got a couple Moline. We have some Moline's here along the line. This is one of four on the sale. I think. Yeah, I think there's four Moline's. A 108. Uh, 110, I think okay. there's a 112. How about these two, the 110 and 108? What do you uh, know about these? Um, well, this 110 has got a, uh, it's got hydraulic uh, lift on it, which is kind of a rear um, feature form. Uh, this is as found. Um, I have have had it running years ago, but okay. you know, it, I'm slow at working on these. I think it's easier to buy them, find them, um, than it is to, to restore them, which I like to do. And you do the restoration work yourself? Yeah, yeah, yeah I do all the restoration. Okay. Okay. It's a complete tear down, sandblast, prime and paint. Sure. And, and, uh, but Moline's pretty cool. Moline's are very collectible. Iconic brand. Yeah, they are. And um, then there's a 108. That's uh, a smaller eight horse version. Um, this one uh, needs a, I've got another flywheel and points and stuff. So I got sure. all the parts for it, but. Uh, and roughly these Moline's vintage, what would you say, 60s? Uh, early 60s, yeah. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, now, next door we have a Jacobson. I understand a Jacobson may be one of your favorites, yeah, would you say, Dave? I do like Jacobson because they sold under um, a lot of different names. They sold under Jacobson. Uh, they made it for Minneapolis Moline, uh, Ford, mm. um, Farmhand, which you'll see a little later. I can't wait to see that one. Yeah, so it, you know they they were a popular manufacturer. Right. Here, here we have a 1,000. 
Yeah, this is the 1,000. This is 10 horse. Most uh, of the ones that you have here come from the Minnesota area, Dave, or all over the place? Well, all over. You know, I, at first it was kind of locally, and then it started uh, because of the internet and auctions and yeah. shows and, and uh, Craigslist and now uh, Facebook. Uh, you can find them all over the country. Right. I mean, I've got some I bought in Florida, some in Michigan. Uh, South Dakota, Illinois, Iowa, uh, Wisconsin, you know, it's kind of all over the place. Right, you know? right. And like I, I was probably teasing Denny, hopefully some of those southern ones you were able to buy in the winter and take a little <laughs> trip maybe, get away from our snow. Well, you know, it, you know how we network together, I, I saw this on uh, a site, the one in Florida was a, was a Wagner, and uh, a couple friends of mine that one was lived in Georgia, one lived in Milwaukee area. Um, they were going down to a show in Florida and uh, they said they'd pick it up and haul it back to nice. at least Milwaukee for me and that's how it worked out. So you know the, the networking part of it has been a key to right. pull them in from all over the place. Right. So. And tons of friends made along Tons the way. of friends along the way too. It's been been a lot of fun. Awesome. Anybody you want to give a shout out to right now? <clears throat> oh gosh, there's there's a lot of them. Okay. You know, especially the ones that uh, well, Dan and Dave Hink, of course. Um, right. uh, Ron Becker up in Plymouth. He's my Minneapolis Moline go-to guy. He's kind of a legend with the Minneapolis He's Moline. a legend with Minneapolis Moline. And, and uh, uh, Rohan uh, King down Georgia, he moved to Utah. He's uh, my early Ford guy that uh, yep. uh, knows everything about those. So, you know, it's, uh, there's too many of them to really list that I don't okay. know. But. Well, good shout out there. We got a few names in yeah. there. So. <laughs> Okay, what do we got next to the Jacobson here? Well, I, I bought it unseen as a speed X, of course, it, it, it isn't. It's a, it's a Wagner model. Okay. Um, but I, I mean, I've had it running, and uh, you know, it's one of the Wagner, I think they made about four or five different models. Okay. They're built in Milwaukee uh, area, and uh, uh, this one uh, is, is missing the hood. But uh, it'd be no, a good, uh, good little project candidate for somebody. For somebody yes. Yeah, you yeah. bet. Another Jacobson here. Yeah, uh, this, is, this is a 62 Jacobson. Okay. Um, they came seven horse Kohlers, a uh, gear driven model. And uh, actually, I think that came from down Portland, Indiana. At a, no, this was Baraboo, Wisconsin. This, this okay. One. I bought, there's another one here that I got in Indiana. Okay. To show, but, uh, but they're fun little tractors. Like I say, a lot of these parts are interchangeable. That has to help with on the restoration. It side, does, right? yeah. yeah. And then we have uh, Cub, Cub, Cub Cadet. Cadet. That's they call them originals. It's uh, 1961. Um, this one has the round fenders on it, which are getting harder to find. Mm. The fenders alone usually bring over two hundred dollars. Really? Those. Wow. But uh, um, this one I had running many years ago. But again, you know, I when I first pick them up, I try to get them so I can at least hear them fire. Sure. And then I might not see them again for five years <laughs> right, right. so right. yeah well, but yeah. it's uh yeah the early models are the originals uh, they called them what year do you think that is that's 61. it's a 61. Yeah. Okay. i think i've got two of those here. okay now you have a couple little giants like denny yeah um i love them little tractors they're uh these are also out of wisconsin yes um and they're actually the story i hear is uh, they were cub cadet was going to uh, hire them for manufacturers. So I don't know if it's like a prototype, but okay. you know, but then little giant. They did make them for a number of years. Okay. But uh, evidently they didn't like the something about them, and then they just built them in house. Hmm. Interesting. Yep. I don't it's, know if I'd ever seen a little giant until I saw Denny's. Yeah, they're they're really not easy to find. Um, like I say they made uh, four or five different models. Too. Close up there for you folks. And a little wheel horse here. Well, this is a early chopped up one. I yep. actually bought it for parts and uh, um, the hood has been cut and different motor on it and that. But, uh, um, okay. And how many wheel horses are, on the, are you selling? Um, I've only got two wheel horses and they're two. both uh, okay. uh, the early, okay. early 60s uh, Suburbans. Okay, and what do we got next door? Well, this is a Case 120. 
1966 was the only year they made them, and it's the only gear-driven case um, they produced. The rest were all uh, hydraulic. Hmm. Um, this one again, I haven't had. This one I haven't had running, but, it's, but it, they're such a rare tractor. That, you know, sometimes you just gotta gotta buy them yeah. when you see them. Yeah. How did you? Uh, I suppose in terms of restoration work, that's just how much time you had and which ones you wanted to pick away at. There's only so many yeah, hours in the day. Exactly, and it seems like I get another tractor that kind of moves it one notch up the up the list in the <laughs> restoration. <laughs> right. And right. I'm not very fast at it. You know, I'd be lucky to do one a year sometimes, and I just work on them in the winter months. But I'm, I'm guessing you had a lot of fun doing it. Oh my gosh, yeah. Like I say, I can't stress the amount of fun I've had, you know, and meeting people and interacting and yeah. and learning. You know, everything is everything has a learning curve, and this was because uh, right. uh, of so many different models that were made of right. different ones. That um, you know, it was, uh, it's been a lot of fun. Very cool. Yeah. Well. You got another Jacobson? Another Jacobson. Yep. What model is this one now, Dave? Um, it'd be a 100. 100? Okay. 100, uh, I can't remember the number of 100. That's, uh, 62. Yeah, 62. Is that a, do you have any from the late 50s or early 60s, kind of the starting point for these? Or? No. No. Um, okay. 62 is the oldest I Okay. Yeah. Are you the... Uh, the Cub Cadet, that was a 61, you said? That's 61. Six, yeah. That might be the oldest. That's um, that you have. Maybe? Yeah. You have a lot of yeah, them. Must be hard be. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yep. They're all. Okay. I, I, one thing I always did, I liked the early 60s, even late 50s, but I could never find, you know, I liked the, some sure. of the earlier wheel horses, but right. I could never find them, you know, 58, nines. Right. Even the earlier ones are 55s. But, uh, okay. Now, uh, Dave, I was telling you before we started filming. Uh, on, the, on the video we did with Denny, some of the Alice, uh, Alice Chalmers collectors yep. were giving me a little crap saying, Pete, you didn't, you didn't talk about the Alice enough. <laughs> so, you got, a, you got a few here, Dave. Uh, tell us about this uh, B10. Um, well, I'm trying to remember all the years and everything here, too. It, uh, uh, I think the B10 was 64. 64 okay. They'll probably beat me up to it. <laughs> but That's it, all right. It's, it's, um, but it's after the B1, um, and then I've got a later one. It's a, the B210. That's a 1970. So they made quite a few different models okay. through the years. Yeah, you um, got two more down the line, right? Yeah, yeah okay. I think so. Okay. Yep. All gear driven, but well, real well built tractors. You know, they came with brakes and strap motors. And, uh, yeah, they were, you could get a lot of different attachments. Going through. And we have uh, what a Speedex here. Speedex. Yeah, uh, what's the scoop with Speedex? Well, Speedex um, Pond, uh, who actually started Wheel Horse before that had Speedex, mm. and then Pond Tractor before that, so it's got a long history of uh, um, made a number of different models there also, okay. um, and I think this one is a S. I can't remember, it's S14, and I got an S18. Okay. Um, different belt tightening system. To make this thing go, you'd push on the pedal and actually move the, motor, the whole motor forward to tighten the belt to engage it. So, you know, it, all these different tractors had different means of uh, clutch systems and that. That would be kind of the fun of restoring all well, these it, different things. It mates. is, you know, I, I enjoy the mechanics a lot of it and, and how they've uh, we evolved and I came up with the different ideas of how to Man. make things work. Okay, another Jake next. 1200? Yep, 12 horse. Pretty complete tractor. Pretty nice sure. shape for no originality. Now, do you ever take any of these out? Mow with them? Let friends mow with them, Dave? No, never have. <laughs> no, but I have taken some to some shows, the, the restored ones. I, okay. I took all my case to a uh, tractor show, uh, featured are there, case tractor. Are there shows just for the garden tractors? <laughs> uh, yes, there's a number of them. Um, what are some of the big ones? Well, last one I went to was uh, in Portage, Wisconsin. It's Garden Tractor Days. Okay. And uh, I think last year he had 
over 800 tractors, wow. all garden tractors. The year before, I think he had a thousand. It's so, an every year thing. It's an every year thing. It's only been going on about maybe four years. But uh, Brett Essie, um, I've bought a few tractors from him. And very not, he's he's the case guy. Okay. To go Portage, to Wisconsin, huh? Portage, Wisconsin. It's in uh, the second week of July every year. Okay. I'll have to check that out. Yeah, it's a it's a good show. Does he have a Facebook page or anything? Ah, uh, yes, he does. Yeah. Folks can check he it also, out. He also runs a military museum in oh, Portage. Wow. So. Cool. Um, uh, and there's a number of other shows in Illinois, and uh, um, they're just garden tractors too. So. Get fun for you guys and gals to get together and oh, prepare notes, yeah. huh? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Well, in the corner we have, oh, another Speed X. Another Speed X. Okay. Um, How did I miss, did he not have any Speed X or did I just miss it? Uh, no, he doesn't like them. <laughs> Why doesn't he like them? So you've got know. something on him, huh? I don't, I, I kind of fell in love with them, but uh, actually this one, I take that back, this one I bought as is, like this. I think okay. I just painted the rims on it and everything else was, was basically done on it. But, uh, S14? S14, yep. It is, Still the same principle of the motor sliding forward, and I don't know if I can get it to. Do the whole thing. Yeah. Moves oh, forward yeah. and tight, tightens the belt, which makes it drive. And that's just this neutral, forward, reverse. So pretty simple transmission. In the Speed X. Speed X. Yeah. Okay, now next door, a town and country. 112. That's, yeah, one of my one of my favorites there. It's beautiful. Um, it's a 112. It's, if there's a common one, it's the 12 horse one, the 112. Okay. These are built in 1970. Um, sold under the uh, White Town and Country uh, name. And, uh, this one's a, a hydrostatic. It really runs nice. And where did you get this one, Dave? Uh, this one I bought off of Craigslist. Uh, and I was really lucky. I mean, I got on it right away when I saw it. Okay. It was priced right. Priced right. You <laughs> um, jumped but it, on. But it, you know, it was it, it ran and everything. But I had to you know restore it. But, right. Um, and this one, I spent quite a bit of time restoring it. I think I repainted that hood five times mm -hmm. before I was happy with it. You know, my shop is full of dust and dirt, and there's no paint booth or anything. We just uh, kind of fly by the seat of our pants, and, you know, doing our painting. But uh, well, I'd say you did a heck of a job there, David. Well, thanks, it looks just gorgeous. Yeah. Looks like new. Yeah, that's, you know, you can, uh, I can still buy um, the spear company used to make uh, reproduction seats for a lot of these. Okay. And out of Oklahoma, now they're out of business, so it's harder to find people that sure. Uh, you know, now look at that. Store a lot of the parts. That looks like you're uh, hopping in there in the 1960s. Go, go off and do what you got to do. Go mow. Perfect, like new. Now, Case, you have a bunch of beautiful Case garden tractors well, here, Dave. Yeah, they were, Case was kind of one of my favorite brands, too. Now, why was that? Uh, I think just the, the look of them, you know, uh, the color scheme, plus they look like they're big tractors. That is cool. I, I've noticed that, yeah. that they do, they're like Yeah, and they were, uh, they were a hydraulic drive, so, uh, and it had, you, most of them had a high-low range, too, so you can put in high or low. And then the hydraulic motor drives and uh, uh, let you, uh, you know, go forward and reverse. But, okay. but it, it's to me, it's kind of like the weak link on them because they, if that hydraulic isn't working quite right, they don't have the power that like I'd like to see. Okay. But, uh, um, but yeah, they're they were a nice uh, nice little track. Next, and this is a sixty sixty seven, I believe. Sixty seven. Now, did you buy your cases? Uh, one at a time or in a yeah. group? Yeah, yeah, this one I, I think my 130 which we'll be coming up to, that came out of Michigan. Okay. Uh, the 195, the large one, that came out of Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Okay. You know, so they, they kind of all over, you know, it's okay. whenever you... You kind of have an all-star team going. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, you know, awesome. Another mini next, the 112. Yep, this is a 112 uh, Hydro. Did you restore this Just, yourself? Yeah, this one I restored. Um, Gorgeous. Good running tractor. Um, yeah, I, you know I don't have any attachments for any of these. I, if, if they did come with anything, they came with a mower deck, yeah. and I usually just put them off the side. And, sure. Yeah, I probably should restore them too. But 
have a fountain of them in the corner, so. Over the years with your collection, did you ever get folks that are interested in buying any of them, uh, just privately, Dave? Uh, you know, any yeah. one in particular, like, man, that Minneapolis Molina, that case, I just I want to have it. Well, I've had a lot of inquiries going with my farm here. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to think, I think there's only about a, maybe a dozen of those that no one to you know, and, and everybody that has one knows knows each other, okay. I think. And, um, so, I mean, that's a popular one I get yeah, asked about. We got some more eye candy coming down the line that yeah. farm all, or farmhand for you folks. Now let's get into the. Uh, we got three more cases here. What is this model, Dave? This is a 130. Little guy. Yep, the little guy's a 130, and his bigger brother is the farther one down. That's the 180. Okay. Um, those are both 1965 models. These these are just beautiful. And uh, yeah, they were they're a fun uh, fun track, and I like the again, like I say, the, the paint scheme to them. Yeah, it is incredible. These, yeah, they're they're pretty hard to find. Where'd the 195 come from? I think that's the one that came from Sioux Falls. Oh, that's Sioux Falls. Okay. Sioux Falls, yeah. Again, just a little bit bigger. These had a 12 horse. The other ones had tens. Yep. Uh, the same principle of uh, you know the drive. The, the high low is a lever down here, and uh, and then here's your forward reverse. Classic lawn and garden, right there, folks. Yeah. Case 195. And the last case here, what model is this, this is again? This is 180. Again, 1960. This is the Michigan one. Yeah. Okay. Um, what kind of condition was it in when you got it from Michigan? It was pretty complete, you know, but okay. you know, it needed restoration. But, uh, Did you you don't ever buy any that are completely restored like this? Um, or you do the work yourself? I guess yourself? I've never had the opportunity. Sure. <laughs> You know, and I, and I like tinkering, you know, right. and that's, I guess, why I like to buy them. Right. Well, of course, always it's cheaper um, when they're all sure. in, in the rough, I call well, them. Folks, if you want a, a looking like new vintage awesomeness, again, online auction Monday here of Dave's uh, Garden Tractors. Uh, it's just gorgeous. Oh, okay, another, another one of your Alice Chalmers, a B210 next. B210. Um, I think this is a 1970. Okay. Um, like I say, one of my first ones. Um, this is one of your first ones? Yeah. I think okay. this was my first tractor. And I like the ag tires, so I put ag tires on it. And um, actually, the motor on this one was rebuilt by my former uh, industrial arts shop teacher. Really? And uh, which I didn't know until after the fact. And so, I mean, yeah. the motor runs like a top on it. And, what, what was his name? Uh, John Bovet. From Red Wing? From Red Wing, yeah. Oh. Very cool. And anyway, yeah, and then I just restored it to, from there. I that think was, right now the points might be might have gotten wet and we've had an awful lot of rain here. Four inches. Yeah, you can see the you can see the puddles here. Minnesota, they, we're turning into uh, yeah. 15,000 lakes, aren't we? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. And is this, let's see, one more. This is the last Moline? Uh, this is the last uh, Moline. 110? 110. This is hydrostatic. Um, again, uh, runs good. Um, unrestored. This is just exactly how I bought it. Okay. And, uh, actually, this one, I apologize. Yeah, this one does have more deck, and it does. I have I have mowed with this one, I guess. I okay. forgot about it. But, uh, okay. Yeah, so it, now, when you were mowing with this Minneapolis Million 110, did, did people stop and talk to you? <laughs> um, yeah, they probably did one or two times, you know, wondering what, what it is. And that. I bet you turned some heads with that. Yeah. Now, Dave, I, I would say you would really turn heads with your Panzer right here next if you took this thing out. You ever mow this one? No. No, that one I haven't. But, uh, now, what is the scoop with these Panzers? Uh, well, tell us this one. How long have you had it? Um, this one I bought from a gentleman at a show from, uh, came from Illinois. Okay. And. Uh, what model is this? Is um, it's a T. T75 ES, I think, is electric start. Okay. Um, early 60s, Briggs and Stratton motor. Um, that's the original paint scheme. That's the color they came, which mm. I don't know how they figured out that, but uh, it's different. It's but, very uh, unique, isn't it? But yeah, they had, it was, this is a Panzer. There was also a Copar Panzer, Pennsylvania Panzer. Uh, the earlier ones were red in color. 
and some of those even have just a three wheel, like you said, one front wheel. And were you telling me these things were really built solidly? Yeah, very solidly. Um, interesting how their, their drive train is on these. It's got a, a belt tightener. Belt tightener here that tightens the belt. You pull it back, it hits a rubber reverse gear that makes it go in reverse. Um, it drives down to a huge chain and sprocket, which is hooked to a, actually it's a narrowed um, Chrysler or Dodge uh, differential. Hmm. So I mean, it, and I think that's how they got their name Panzer because Panzer also made a different company, but Panzer made tanks. Right, right. <laughs> and right. Uh, but that color. Yeah, the colors. Now, how tough was it when you were storing this to get that color absolutely spot on? Well. Um, well, that's one thing when you build a network of friends and people that specialize in. And I think I had correspondence with somebody out in. Uh, you had a Panzer guy out, out east that uh, uh, that gave me the paint codes for it. Well, folks, you might want to hop in and bid on this thing. It's just uh, you will definitely <laughs> it's get. It's a pretty cool tractor. Absolutely. Now, what is this next door to it? This is a um, 1965 Colt, which Colt is the same year. It's, it's same year as like the 130 and the 180 case. Okay. Uh, they did make some Colt. This is a Super 10, which is 10 horse. Okay. And then they made Ranchers and uh, Colt Supers and Ranchers. There might be one other model. Where was Colt out of? Pardon? Where was Colt? Where were they from? Um, out of Wisconsin. I Wisconsin. Can't, I can't okay. pronounce the name. Of it. Unfortunately, this actually the seat bracket broke on it. it just needs welding. welding Kind of, it's an opportunity, way, isn't it? Yeah. It's an opportunity. This is the way I bought it, and, sure. and uh, I just added the, was missing the side panels. Um, so I got a guy in Ohio that's got a lot of case parts. And okay. Got those from him. But, but well. the, the side chrome strips are really hard to uh, find. And this one had that. I'm just going to pull back, folks. I don't know if you've ever seen a picture before of a Panzer next to a Colt, next to a little giant, next to a wheel horse, next to a farm man. This would be the only picture in the world, probably, with this. <laughs> With this collection right there, that's awesome. So, uh, is little, another little giant here, Dave? Yeah, this is a 500 model. That's awesome. Five horse uh, rig. Um, yeah, we'll try to walk around our lake here. Yeah, yeah, it's got high tide here from the rain, but uh, um, <laughs> this was one of my favorites here too. Okay. Um, they also did make different models that had electric start on them, which I still have them at home. But, uh, um, but again, this is another one where. It takes me about four or five times to paint something. <laughs> Get it so I'm, just I'm right. happy with it. The rarer ones, I was always a little more fussy on how, right. you know, how they wanted it. To I was out. telling Denny with his little giant, I just love their logo too. That's yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Okay. Another wheel horse coming up next? Yep, another wheel horse. I believe it's a 1960 uh, little 400 Suburban. Um, occasionally you can see them with these, this style. Uh, original rubber on them. I, I love that tire pad. Yep. Um, yeah, they're a little, little guy. They, they, you bring them to a show, these are the ones that little kids are just attracted to. Just like a magnet. Yeah, because, because of the size. But, right. You know, it's, uh, but I let them sit on them, whatever. Just to well, we need those young people to carry on the, the, the love of these exactly. things. Yep, exactly. And like I talked about with Denny, uh, learning about this stuff, Dave, Back in the 60s and 70s, gosh, there were so many companies making these things. Yeah. yeah I guess the perfect example is right next door here, very rare farmhand. Yeah. Yeah, the farmhand is probably my favorite. Why is it your favorite, Dave? Pardon? Why is it your favorite? Um, probably the rarity. Okay. Again, that you know, I, I like the color scheme of it. It's beautiful. Um, interesting story how I find this. Found this. I advertised on a on a. I think it was a Facebook site, yep. and um, and I posted a picture of one that I found. And, and about a, three, four days, somebody uh, came out of Iowa yep. and uh, said, "I don't have it, but a friend of mine does." And hmm. Anyway, I got talking with him, got the address and that, and I, I mean, I flew down there in a hurry. <laughs> nice. Um, and uh, anyway, it was a complete tractor. I uh, guess just needed restoring and. 
That is beautiful. And again, you were saying they, they're just, they only made them one year, is that One correct? year, 1962. Yep. Wow. And it's, I can't remember if I told you, but it, you know, it's, it's like a, a close-knit family. Everybody that owns one of these things, you know, knows each other okay. through uh, correspondence. But, uh, uh, the but farmhand, the farmhand club. Yeah, we call it kind of like a little club, but it's, nice. but they're from, I know one in Pennsylvania, uh, four in Illinois, about three in Minnesota, um, one down in Georgia. Uh, you know, so you, you, you kind of keep track of wow. who's got them. And, that is cool, Dave. You know, but, and, the, you know, they're all willing to share uh, share information. Sure. You know, well, I, had, I had a hard time uh, matching, uh, or finding the right color codes. For sure. This. Well, folks, really unique opportunity here on this farmhand. Again, sells Monday online auction. Uh, up here in Zimbroda, Minnesota. A couple more down. We got three more down the line of MoCraft. Now, I don't know much about MoCraft, Dave. Well, MoCraft was the earliest uh, Minneapolis Moline. Okay. Um, MoCraft 1962 is this model. Okay. And, uh, and then 63. And 64, they were, you know, they were yellow. Okay. So, again, these were built by Jacobson. The history on the serial numbers and the tags with the tractors, the garden tractors, the combines. That's just that's a piece of history, isn't it? Yes, yep. That just verifies it and you can identify the years. And right. The yep. And uh, Alice B1? This is the first year for Alice Chalmers, the B1. Um, that was one of my first tractors, also. Okay. And uh, uh, again, just a little gear drive transmission and uh, um, Briggs and Stratton motor and uh, runs good too. They got kind of a unique, these ones kind of have a unique uh, foot system, but you got to kind of be careful. They kind of fold, fold in. Okay. So you can see how you got to kind of, kind of work it in there. And, uh, where the other ones just are hinged. folks and the last one on the list Dave the last one is a 1961 Cub Cadet we call them originals um, seven horse coalers uh, this one I haven't had running for I'm trying to think the last time this one was running it's got some wiring wiring issues but, uh, um, but it's a pretty complete tractor um, the fenders were an option, so a lot of, a lot of them didn't have fenders. Uh, they also could add uh, creeper gear, which is a real a low range. Kind of PTO on the back. Uh, headlights, tail lights. Uh, it's pretty much a, I don't know if you say a stripped down model, but sure. it's, uh, but, you know, it's hard to find the air, oil bath air Kind of hard to believe that's almost what 60 years old now yeah exactly well dave that was awesome thank you for the tour of your collection well, well thank you i really appreciate the opportunity and you know it's, it's hard to see some of these go but uh um i'm definitely not out of the hobby i still have some that i'm sure going to re restore and it's kind of bearing things, so. bearing things down a little bit yeah, yeah yep but it's a good opportunity to find some real rare tractors here if yeah. anyone's looking for them and I do want to make a plug for a Lawn and Garden Tractor magazine, okay. which is, um, they've been around probably 13, 14 years. And I was a member or subscription to that from day one. And okay. they've been an unbelievable resource for networking, for parts, for shows, uh, restoration projects, and how-tos and that. So What's the name? Uh, Lawn and Garden Tractor magazine. And Where are they published out of? Uh, Indiana, okay. I believe. And, uh, but, uh, they do a great job. And so, if folks are interested in these things, that'd be a great that'd be a great resource for them to 
to, to join that and uh, um, they do a great job a lot of color well, all color pictures now right. and everything and so it's cool uh, yes now really Dave, you've had your your garden tractors out on display here at the Houghton's auction uh, center for uh, a while now have you been getting some uh, questions and comments about oh yes uh, the, uh, probably number one is am I okay I'm not dying am I <laughs> oh sure <laughs> but I uh, uh, yeah I get a lot of questions a lot of them from uh, other collectors that I know right um, from that and uh, yeah a lot of them are interested in some of them as far as we as uh, Utah right um, Utah and Pennsylvania and that so um, it's, it's a lot of more people that I've sure dealt with in the past you know learning and connecting with so well, I bet right on Main Street here in Zimbroda Minnesota which is an awesome community folks if you've never been to Zimbroda just north of Rochester come on out visit it's a great town but again people driving by seeing your awesome collection here I, I think I think Todd's been getting some more maybe traffic through here of late. <laughs> uh, he always gets a lot of traffic. Yeah. does a great job. But again, the sale is Monday, Dave. Thank you so much for giving us the walkthrough and the history. And folks, hop online. Again, it's Houghton's Auction Service. And um, bid on these things and uh, piece of history. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Greg. All right, folks, here with Brian Sander with Houghton's Auction Service. Now, Brian. Quite a sale you got Monday. Thanks for uh, cluing me into Dave and his amazing collection of garden tractors. That was really fun. Very, very cool collection. And uh, you guys, right on the highway here, you've had the garden tractors out for a couple weeks. Uh, have you had people pulling into the lot here to check them out? Nonstop. Wow. Yep. Very Every cool. Every day. And again, the sale is the online auctions this Monday. Yep, the 23rd, this 23rd. coming Monday. And what time does it close? At 6 p.m., lot number one will start to sell. Okay. Now it's not just the garden tractors. It, nope, it's everything here. The garden tractors are first on okay. the catalog. Okay. But everything outside and inside will all be on the same. Okay. Page. And I noticed amazing, as you guys always have, amazing variety, a bunch of cool stuff uh, inside here. And outside, some of these, uh, talk about cool folks, some snowmobiles. And Brian, you were saying these just came in? Yes, this week. Yep, all four are the same owner. Local fella? Uh, out of Wisconsin. Oh, oh, I see. Okay. Falls. okay. And I understand there's one in the back here. Is that an Arctic Cat? Arctic Cat 440 EXT. And that is already up to what? Oh, within six hours, it was up over uh, $2,900. $2,900. Wow. I got to yep. get a little close up on that. Do we know anything about it or just kind of. Uh... He, uh, he redid the two older ones. Uh, he really liked Arctic Cat. The ZR is an O2. Okay. That only has 300 miles on it. Oh, wow. That looks ripe for a Mountain Dew sponsorship, I think. Awesome. And Brian, you, you probably still get folks talking to you about the snowmobile uh, vintage sled auction you guys had. What was that like three years ago or something? Yep, yep, at the fairgrounds at one of our consignment sales. How many people did you have for that auction? Oh, they You came from all over, didn't you? Yes, they? yes. They're close to a thousand bidders. Okay. Yep. Well, now Brian, you guys sell tons of farm machinery. I'll just ask you here, what have you been seeing with uh, used farm equipment market here through the summer, early fall of 2019? So far, everything's been pretty steady, pretty good. Good quality stuff still in demand? Is that what you guys have been? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Very cool. All right, folks. Well, again, the sale is Monday, online auction, and the website, uh, Brian? HoutonAuctions.com. HoutonAuctions.com. Check it out, folks. You got some amazing garden tractors, and Brian, always uh, good to catch up with you. Thank you. You also. Okay, Brian, and one more important little piece here. All this cool stuff you got on the auction Monday. Uh, open house time when folks can come out and eyeball it is, is when? Tomorrow, Thursday, we'll be here 9 to 5. Again, Friday, 9 to 3. And Monday, the 23rd, from 9 to 5, we'll be open for preview. Okay, and we're right off the main drag in Zambrota. What's the highway you guys are off of here, is it? Highway 58. Highway 58. We'll stop in, folks. Great stuff to see and good folks to visit with at Houghton Auction Service. Thanks, Brian. Thank you. Ram Trucks, premier vehicle of Machinery Pete TV.